Hey, this is Arasio Jones from Cinema Viva, and I'm coming back at you with another Cinema Viva Tech Talks. This is number five, and it's about the HyperDeck HD Shuttle. So I'm often called upon to be a one-man video band, and this includes being a teleprompter operator at times, too. In addition to operating the lights, the camera, the sound, teleprompter operation is an increasingly asked for skill set. This is why when Blackmagic came out with the HyperDeck Shuttle with a teleprompter feature, I was very intrigued. Normally, I set up a laptop connected to a monitor or an iPad and use the space bar and arrow keys to control the scrolling. But the HyperDeck Shuttle has a terrific jog wheel that's very tactile. It makes matching the talent's speed and cadence very easy. Let's take a look at the actual device. Here are the main features. HDMI in and out, SD card slot, USB connection for storage or updates, Ethernet connection, power plug, jog wheel, and various traditional broadcast deck controls. I'm not going to spend any time on the recording or playback features because there are plenty of videos out there already on that subject. Plus, the user interface is very similar to existing HyperDeck models. Instead, I'm going to focus solely on how the teleprompter function works and how I rig it up for my shoots. First, I connect the teleprompter to a Lilliput 8.9 inch monitor using the HDMI out. I'll call this monitor 1. I chose this monitor because it has HDMI in and out, as well as the ability to flip the image horizontally and vertically. More on why this is important in a bit. Next, I'll connect HDMI out to the mini HDMI in of this thin touchscreen monitor, which is placed on the teleprompter. I'll call this monitor two. I bought this 16 inch iPad teleprompter rig off Amazon for 189, and the 15.6 inch touchscreen monitor cost 436 back then, a couple years ago, but you can probably get a similar size monitor for around 250 nowadays. You can set the HyperDeck shuttle to output a flipped signal, which is great for the monitor on the teleprompter, monitor two, but not so good for the first monitor in line, monitor one. That's why you need a monitor like this Lilliput that can horizontally flip the signal. Oh, it's not a big deal though. You just go through the menu like this. I just wish the monitor would remember the setting every time so I don't have to change it back each time I fire up the monitor. Anyways. So that's how you hook everything up. Now let's look at the teleprompter function in more detail. This device is able to read an RTF rich text file document, which you can easily create in Word. Once you're happy with the script, you simply save it as an RTF file on an SD card or hard drive and connect it to the HyperDeck shuttle. You can also FTP it, more on that later. Next, you have to go into the HyperDeck menu. Under record, find the codec option and scroll down until you get to the teleprompter option. Choose that and it goes into the prompting mode. If you go back and choose the monitor menu option, then you have access to adjust the font size line spacing margin flip horizontally or flip vertically. You will want to choose flip horizontally and adjust the rest of the functions as you see fit. Now monitor number two is longer than the teleprompter glass, so I add a 10% margin on each side to compensate. Now you're ready to prompt. These are the main HyperDeck shuttle controls you will need. Jog wheel, Press left or right arrow to select from different RTF files on the card. Press jog to manually scroll through the script just like you would when editing a video. Press the scroll key to scroll through the script quickly. And most importantly, press both scroll and jog at the same time to enable full teleprompter mode. And here's where you have to get used to this jog wheel. It doesn't take long though. Once you're used to it, the action is very smooth. In this mode, it will automatically scroll forward and backward according to how you turn the jog wheel. This is perfect for being able to follow the talent at his or her speed. That's pretty much the basics, but there are some interesting situations that can arise when you're doing this for real. Of course, the most common thing is last minute script changes. If a client or member of their entourage notices something is wrong, they need to change it right away and quickly. And there are a couple of ways to do this. Option one, work with two SD cards. Card one is loaded onto the HyperDeck while card two is on standby connected to the laptop. The master script is on the laptop on Word, so you just simply save the new version to card two 
and switch cards after you've done the revisions. Then you'll have to find the new version of the script on the Hyperdeck shuttle. This works great, except that the Hyperdeck doesn't show the file name of the script on the monitor. So we have to put the new version number at the top of each script like this to not get confused. Next, you'll put card one into the card reader of the laptop and you're good to go. You get the idea. You can do this switching process each time changes occur. The other option is to connect the Hyperdeck to the network so you can FTP the new script onto the Hyperdeck SD card. You can easily do this by connecting a USB-C to Ethernet adapter to your laptop and then run a short Ethernet cable to the Hyperdeck. You will have to adjust the network settings in system preferences and then use an FTP client like Cyberduck to log into the folder. Then you simply drag and drop the revised version from your laptop to the FTP client. Now just press the right arrow on the Hyperdeck to locate the new file. I have to note though that this doesn't always work. Uh, when we were recording this video we tried it a couple of times and the Hyperdeck just failed to update after the FTP file was sent. So the solution was to unplug the Hyperdeck and then plug it back in and then everything came up like it should. All right guys, I'm gonna keep this video short compared to the Starlink one. I think I'm gonna use this as my main teleprompter setup despite its quirks. It's pretty quick and easy to operate. Eventually, I'm gonna put all this in a hard case for even easier setup. The only downside I would say is a process for updating revisions. It would be great if the Hyperdeck showed up as a network disk so you could save directly to it from work. I also wish that you could add cue markers at certain points, especially for longer scripts. Overall though, I think the Hyperdeck shuttle is a solid product at a good price point of $495. You can also use it to record or play back videos, which is a super handy option. Hey, thanks again for watching. I would love to know all your questions and special extra thanks to Angel for doing the teleprompting. As always, I'm Arasio Jones of Cinema Viva and our team wishes you mucho successo in your video ventures.